Hey folks, Ray DC Mermarket.com here. Today with the new Sunto 5 GPS watch. This is Sunto's latest wearable on the block, and it basically succeeds the Sunto Spartan Trainer that came out about two years ago. Now that watch was priced at 279 bucks, and this one's a little bit more expensive at 329 bucks, but it's essentially like the middle ground between two different watches. And you may be wondering about now, what the heck is up with the Sunto naming scheme? And we're gonna make it a little bit clear. At the low end, you've got the Sunto 3. This thing sits right there, about 200 bucks, give or take. And at the high end, you've got the Sunto 9, which sits over here at a, a wide range of prices, but roughly 600-ish or so dollars. Then you've got the Sunto 5 that sits right about there. This is, of course, the old Sunto Spartan trainer that this thing replaced. We'll just get rid of it for now. So, three, five, hmm, nine. There you go, the naming scheme in a nutshell. Oh, and hey, a quick thing before we get too far along here, if you're finding this video useful or interesting, go ahead and like that like button right now at the bottom there. It really helps the channel and the video quite a bit. So what the heck does the Sunto 5 have in it? Well, it's effectively got the best of both worlds. Down here at the Sunto 3 side, you did not have GPS in it itself. You had to use your smartphone paired to it in order to track GPS effectively. So you're leveraging your smartphone's GPS and in turn also its battery, which kind of sucked. The top end here at Sunto 9, you're spending a lot, but you do have GPS in it, which makes sense, of course, like most of Sunto's wearables have GPS. So the Sunto 5 effectively takes the best of both of those. In the case here, it does have GPS in it, which is great. It doesn't quite have the same battery life and bulk that you see at the Sunto 9 level here. Uh, now what you'll notice on this is it does retain the satellite bump of like the old Ambit series and the Sunto trainer. But internally, it's got the same new GPS chipset of the Sunto 9. Yet another change. And in terms of that, it has some of the additional intelligent battery modes that you saw with the Sunto 9 as well. So then what does it pull from the Sunto 3? We'll get stress tracking, which isn't available on the Sunto 9 for some odd reason. It gets resource tracking or body battery if we use like Garmin parlance, which isn't also available on this watch. And it gets VO2 max as well. So it's getting some of the more like, I don't want to say like basic fitness features, because in a lot of ways those are actually more advanced, but either way, it's, it's getting those features, and this one still doesn't have those features. And then in addition to that, it's going to get a new sleep quality metric as well. So what about the battery life? Well, this definitely sees a bump up over the Sunto Spartan Trainer. Uh, for example, this used to get 10 hours of regular GPS mode. This gets 20. This tops off at 40 hours in its reduced tracking mode used for like hiking and whatnot, whereas this got 30. So that's a pretty sizable bump considering the two devices look about the same. In fact, I would actually say this one looks maybe a touch bit thinner than this one here. On the back side here, we do have the old optical sensor package, or at least it appears that way. It is different than the uh, Sunto 9 optical sensor package, and you can kind of see that a little bit within the layout of the sensors themselves, so slightly different package there. And this matches the old Spartan Trainer package that you see right there. Um, all these are from Valencell, and I've had somewhat varying luck with different ones here, uh, as you'll see in some of my testing a bit here. Now, what do you lose if you go from the Sunto 9 down to this, or if you were looking at the Sunto 9 and you ended up on this? Uh, number one, is there no barometric altimeter in this device? So that means that your elevation accuracy could be a little bit iffy depending on how things go, that I've generally seen that Sunto's GPS-based um, elevation accuracy is pretty solid. Uh, you're also losing the compass, so if you're doing navigation or whatnot, um, you don't have like an, a true compass, a magnetic compass like you would in this unit here. You are reducing your battery life as well, and quite substantially in some cases, but Again, this is quite a bit beefier than this unit is here. There is no touchscreen on this watch, which I think is fine. I almost never use the touchscreen on this, even when like I could use it, I almost never do. I just use the button, so that's fine. Um, and in turn with that, you lose the ability to change the display brightness on this. So it's just kind of one brightness level, it is what it is, uh, whereas this one you can change that. And then last but not least, what is I think probably the really big one here, though you might not see this on the side of the box, is that this does not have the ability to connect to moves count versus all of Sunto's past watches, with the exception of Sunto 3 there, can indeed connect to moves count. Uh, now moves count is their like legacy platform, if you will, but it's quite frankly the most full featured one, especially if you have lots of routes there already or lots of history there already, uh, versus their new sports tracker based one is also known as like the Sunto platform, um, is a little more basic. It kind of reminds you a little bit like of Run Keeper of the 1990s. Uh, I have been pretty vocal that I'm not a fan of it, so take my word with a grain of salt, but I've also used it enough to know it's, it's not awesome at all. Um, so yeah. Though it is actually not bad on the smartphone app side. Uh, they've got the new smartphone mobile app for it, uh, and they have been making lots of improvements, and I'll show you some of those in just a second here on the watch itself. 
Speaking of the watch itself, let's go ahead and just kind of do a super quick walkthrough here. There are about a half a dozen different watch faces that you can select. Uh, none of these are customizable in terms of downloading third-party watch faces, but you can choose from the different ones that they have there. We can go up and go into exercise mode, which I'll talk about in a second. Navigation to pull up in uh, routes we've downloaded to the unit. Logbook is your history. Timer is pretty self-explanatory. And then settings, and in here, uh, the same settings and options that you saw on the Suunto 9 series. So for example, you compare Bluetooth smart sensors, pair your phone, uh, change navigation settings. Oops, I just clicked the back button at the same time there, my apologies. And then down into activity tracking. Uh, so here you can turn on the daily optical heart rate tracking in the back, so 24 by seven optical heart rate tracking. Keep in mind that does burn battery like nobody's business. Uh, it's roughly 3% per hour, which might not sound a lot until you do the math on that and you realize that you're getting like, a couple days worth at most out of that. So just uh, that's burning pretty quickly if you turn on daily optical heart rate, uh, which looks just like this, where the green light on the back goes on right there and just keeps on, on chugging along. Um, you can now see that though in the smartphone app as well, which is kind of nice. So if we go back here, uh, training, sleep tracking as well, you do need to enable this manually. So just make sure you do that when you first get the watch. Um, otherwise you'll go for a few days and not realize it's not actually tracking sleep. You have smartphone notifications here for iOS and Android. Go and just settle on back here to the watch face. We'll go down to some of the new features on the uh, Suunto 5 in particular. Heart rate is not one of those new features, but this is where I can look at my heart rate over the last few hours. You can see it right there. Um, that's the gap where I charged it earlier because the fact that it only gets uh, a little bit of battery life when you have this 24 by seven heart rate tracking on. Uh, so quite a bit less than most of the competition does in that mode. Go on down here. This is the new stress tracking right now. It thinks I'm stressed. I don't know, I'm seeing pretty calm to me, um, but that's all right. So click on that there and I can see my resources as well. This is something that Garmin calls body battery. Both companies leverage the exact same license module from first beat though. They just name it different things. Resources in Suunto's case, body body in Garmin's case. It's the same thing from first beat standpoint. And it's kind of like street fighter style showing you how much like energy you have over the course of the day. You can see here is when I'm gaining energy um, at night and then while I'm sleeping. And then here I'm going down, that little gap there is again when I was charging it earlier on. Uh, so going down again, and this is not offered on the Suunto 9, uh, and neither is a stress tracking either. So both those two options are just on the Suunto 5 and Suunto 3. Going down, I have my steps for the day. I click again in there and see steps the last few days. Calories, I'll go back again. I'll go back and down one more time. Uh, training this week started today on Monday and I haven't done anything yet today. So you're not gonna see anything there. And then if I go down here, my sleep last night, six hours and five minutes, and I can go into that and I can see the sleep for just this past night because it's only night I wanted to wear it all night long. And my average heart rate during my sleep as well at 51 beats per minute. Uh, so we'll go back down. Again, one more time, my fitness level is listed in here. At this point, we're at the bottom of our options here. So I'm gonna go back up to exercise mode there just to show you that really briefly here. Uh, so you can see here is where I choose my different running sport modes. I can customize these with the smartphone app uh, and it works pretty well. You can't customize them yet on the Suunto website, so only with the smartphone mobile app and you can change the data fields and whatnot. There are some quirks to this, but it's, it's not a bad start to things. And then from here, it's gonna go ahead and search for GPS as well as heart rate. And if I had any sensors paired to it, it searched for those as well. Uh, if I go up here, you can see the different modes that are from battery standpoint. So it says 11 hours in that green option right there. I'm gonna tap this and when I change that, it'll change the battery mode to 23 hours left uh, in this secondary mode and press it again here and it goes back to the green mode, uh, which is kind of your full on tracking at one second recording versus this is a reduced recording rate and in turn saves more battery life. I can then go down here at the bottom to go into options uh, and this is where I can change my heart rate zone targets, my navigation. Uh, I can choose a given course in here, for example, if I wanted to or a point of interest to route to. And I can go back here, change the backlight settings, uh, sensors, battery mode, the same battery mode we saw earlier, and then change the theme, auto lap, auto pause, feeling. Uh, that's like afterwards it asks you what you felt about that particular workout. Uh, the same options that we saw on the Suunto 9, no different there at all. And then when I'm ready to go, I just simply press this start button right here. And at this point, it'll start recording. Uh, and again, make sure you do have GPS before you start doing this if you are outside. Now, a couple quick seconds on the GPS accuracy and heart rate accuracy. Uh, I've done two runs with this now. Of course, it's just out today. It's not gonna start shipping for another month, not actually like three weeks or something like that. So we'll get more time for more testing down the road. Uh, so far, GPS accuracy is looking pretty solid on this. It does make sense, so it does have the GPS module on the outside, like the older Suunto devices, uh, but also carries with it the new Sony chipset that pretty much everyone else has adopted. So in theory, 
might be the best of both worlds, but we'll have to see a bit more testing on that. Optical heart rate side, eh, hasn't been super awesome for me. I've, it's not horrible, but it's not like great. It's definitely the least performing of the four units I've been using the last week or so. Maybe things will get better over time. If you want to check out both of those data sets, you can see the links down in the description there or my full post, which is down there as well. Now, from a running pace stability standpoint, things seem pretty responsive as well. Uh, I could change speeds, shift speeds pretty quickly, no real issues there either. So that's all pretty good. Again, I'll dig into the more of that stuff in my full in-depth review. So after your run is completed, you can go ahead and look at the workout itself on the Sunto app. Uh, this is the Sunto app here. You can add pictures to your workout and stuff like that. This is my run from yesterday, just a simple 10K run. You can see the run down there from uh, last week in Helsinki. In this case, I didn't add a picture to it, but I could. I can then tap on that run right there. There we go. It's going to load that up uh, and you'll see the map of the workout or the, the GPS track as well as the picture. So there's the GPS track right there. I can scroll down then to see different stats. I got the running stats. I can swipe to the right of that there, uh, see additional running stats and swipe again uh, and see more running stats. And again, uh, most of these stats are pretty straightforward. Uh, so, you know, averages and whatnot, kind of your summary stats, if you will. I can view the heart rate graph over time, go down to pace, see my average pace over time. I can swipe through this, see in speed if you're cycling as opposed to pace for running, see my altitude there. Uh, in this case, there is no barometric altimeter on this, so it uses a GPS-based altimeter. Uh, seems a bit optimistic in some cases because it's pretty much a pancake flat course, uh, but nonetheless, that's there. And then cadence, running cadence, uh, vertical speed, again, related to elevation. And then we'll go on down here. Uh, this is the first time in this particular route, so it's not gonna have anything to compare it to. And then again, down the bottom, these are my lap splits. These are manual laps. Uh, I done one and then hit lap again for the first time. Go swipe through here. Distance, these are automatic laps. And so in this case, it's a bit more, you know, one mile increments to the entire thing. And then here we have 0.5 mile laps, one mile laps, five mile laps, and 10 mile laps. In my case, I'm on statute, but if you were on metric, you would see different metrics there. And then finally, I can go ahead up here and tap the little map bubble and zoom in on different things and you know look at the GPS track and whatnot. Uh, and again, you can see the full GPS track on uh, my site there, along with comparing it to the other three watches that I used at the exact same time to see how they look. Uh, I can kind of give you the spoiler version though, is that things for the most part look pretty good. There's little quirks like this little one right there where I went off into the river apparently. So we switch over to satellite view, which is usually the proper way to do any sort of GPS analysis, satellite view. Uh, you can see though, it did handle fairly well going through the museum correctly. So I ran through that a little bubble on the other side, but that's pretty good. Like that's a very small, uh, maybe a five meter difference there. So it's not very much at all. Overall, not too shabby. Anyways, hope you found this interesting. If you did, go ahead and like that like button bottom there or hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Also, don't forget to check out the full in-depth review. Actually, it's not really a review yet. It's like a preview. The review will come later on, probably sometime in June, once it starts shipping. With that, have a good one.